Welcome back to Ubad's lab and today we're going to be making copper sulfate. YouTube channel called Entropy where I post chemistry videos and occasional physics or electronics related topics. Beautiful. Yeah, that is one zero zero. Both zero. Say it off again. Zero. So today I'll be talking about copper sulfate. Copper sulfate has the chemical formula Cu. SO4. This salt in its pentahydrate form is a rich blue color and its anhydrous form is off white. It is soluble in water and methanol but is insoluble in ethanol and acetone. The pentahydrate salt has a triclinic crystal structure which results in large geometric shapes which contains flat faces. Copper sulfate is most used in the lab in its anhydrous form as a drying agent. It signifies the presence of water due to the color transition to blue as more copper sulfate pentahydrate is formed. In addition, copper sulfate is frequently used in Fehling's and Benedict solution to test for reducing sugars. Moreover, it is used in Burette's reagent for the test of proteins. For commercial uses, copper sulfate is used as a fungicide and less commonly as a herbicide. The reaction between copper sulfate and sulfuric acid is extremely slow due to the position of copper in the reactivity series being lower than hydrogen. If hot concentrated sulfuric acid is used, the reaction would progress more quickly as concentrated sulfuric acid possesses oxidizing properties. Hydrogen peroxide is used as an oxidizing agent in the reaction to oxidize Cu to Cu2+. Presumably the hydrogen peroxide will form an equilibrium between sulfuric acid with hydrogen peroxide and peroxy monosulfuric acid and water. The peroxy monosulfuric acid then reacts with copper to form copper sulfate and water. Copper sulfate can also be used to make copper carbonate, copper oxide and copper salicylate. So the equipment for this experiment includes the three reactants, which is uh, hydrogen peroxide, sulfuric acid, and copper metal. So we're gonna need 100 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. I'm gonna be using 30% hydrogen peroxide. And then 30 milliliters of sulfuric acid. I'm using drain opener, which is around like 98%, 97% sulfuric acid. So it's pretty concentrated. And uh, 30 grams of copper metal. I'm just going to be using copper wire, which will definitely get the job done. Alright, so I'm going to start by adding 30 milliliters of my sulfuric acid. And I'm actually using this drain opener called Liquid Lightning. And it's supposed to be around 96% uh, sulfuric acid. So we should be good there. There will definitely be some impurities. Hopefully it doesn't uh, affect our uh, copper sulfate synthesis. But I'm just going to start by adding around 30 milliliters of this. It is kind of scaring me that it's a pretty dark color. But hopefully this doesn't get in the way of our uh, synthesis. And now I'm going to add the hydrogen peroxide around 100 milliliters there we go and uh, this should heat up yeah look at that we have to add this slowly so I quickly close up my hydrogen peroxide this is actually known as the piranha solution, hydrogen peroxide and sulfuric acid. Uh, it's used to clean uh, glassware and stuff. Oh, 
All right. It's heating up quite a Oh my God, that is very hot. Okay, I'm gonna wait before adding any more. I don't want this to foam and uh, overspill. Some mixing. Okay, it's turning uh, more of a light brown now and white, which is a good sign. Okay, there's a lot of foam being produced. So I'm gonna wait for this foam to settle down before I add any more hydrogen peroxide. I still have around 65 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide to go. All right, let's add a bit more. Oh, this smells really bad. The solution is boiling hot. And a bit more, almost there. 25 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide to go. Okay, yeah, let me add a bit more. Oh. All right. And the last bit. All right, that's all the hydrogen peroxide and sulfuric acid added to the solution. It's a kind of a yellowish solution. Pretty good, and uh, kind of shows that it's pretty concentrated sulfuric acid since this is uh, this has heated up a decent amount. Oh my god, that's really hot. Okay, and now I'm gonna drop in around 30 grams of copper metal. Hopefully this doesn't, oh no, it's gonna overspill. Oh, is it not? Uh, it is. Hopefully not too much. Oh, okay, just a little bit. And it turned blue immediately. Uh, I don't want to lose too much of the solution. Please settle down. Definitely should have added the copper slower. <laughs> Probably should have cut it up into uh, bits. Oh god. The wind just blew all that gas into my face for a second. <laughs> okay. We didn't lose too much of the solution from the overspill, but a decent amount. And the solution has turned a dark blue. So we have a decent amount of copper sulfate that's already in the solution. I'm gonna have to clean up my table. Let's mix this around a bit. All right finally settle down a bit and I think we can add our next bit of copper hopefully not too much foaming yeah okay look at that solution wow it's a nice dark blue very concentrated and uh, copper sulfate Since we lost a decent amount of the solution, I think I'm just gonna add uh, 20, more liter 20 more milliliters of hydrogen peroxide and like five more milliliters of sulfuric acid. Cause I do wanna let this solution sit for a bit 
and I want a decent amount of copper sulfate because I have a lot of, lot of stuff planned for it. I want to make a lot of copper complexes. All right, I'm just gonna add this 20 milliliters. of hydrogen peroxide <laughs> god and um it's a very little bit of sulfuric acid all right it's foaming up a decent amount don't think there's gonna be overspill this time. If there is, gonna be very mad. <laughs> oh my god, why does it keep on blowing into my face? I'm moving over here. <laughs> and I'm just gonna pour a little bit of sulfuric acid. I've got around like three milliliters of sulfuric acid. I'm gonna add that once this settles down very slowly. All right, now just a bit of sulfuric acid. All right. Solution has settled down. Look at that beautiful dark blue color. I'm gonna let this sit for a bit and then uh, uh, boil off the excess water and get some solid copper sulfate. All right, so I let the reaction sit for around uh, 15 minutes and we can already see some copper sulfate uh, has precipitated, but I do wanna boil off some of the excess hydrogen peroxide. Uh, the sulfuric acid won't really boil off, uh, we, so we're just gonna be filtering the solution through uh, some filter paper over here so I'm just gonna let it sit and heat up just a little bit oh actually first I want to take out the copper metal let me show that to you guys that focus we have a uh, copper sulfate crystals on the copper metal we'll put that to the side Actually, I don't even think I need to boil off any of the hydrogen peroxide because the solution heated up so much with the sulfuric acid that all the hydrogen peroxide just boiled off by itself. So we have enough copper sulfate solid at the bottom that we can just uh, run it through the filter paper right now. Look at all that copper sulfate at the bottom, it's beautiful.
All right, the copper sulfate is done filtering out and uh, it's all on the filter paper now. So let me show you. Oh no, it just ripped. I'm gonna transfer the copper sulfate onto a different filter paper because it all just ripped. Very nice. Look at that big blob of copper sulfate that I got. And let me get my, uh... all right, we spread this out so it can nicely dry. Wow, this is a very nice dark blue that we got. And I'm very happy with the yield. It's a pretty decent amount, and I didn't have to use too much of my hydrogen peroxide and uh, uh, sulfuric acid. Very nice. And let me give you guys a quick look. And I'm going to let this dry and probably store it from for... Uh, some future videos where I make some more copper complexes Don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos uh, I post twice a week one experimental video and one theoretical video uh, Anyways, thanks for watching guys. I'll see you guys next time